here can listen to the uh, uh, audio. So again, welcome. Uh, we do have a, a quorum, just barely. And uh, uh, Tom Ward asked to be excused. He called me just a few, about an hour ago and said his garage door wouldn't open. <laughs> Which was the, one of the better excuses I've heard. Listen, do you know the code? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going there, Dan. Okay. Uh, you received an agenda in advance of the uh, meeting, and I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Any debate or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Any abstentions? That's unanimous. We also distributed the meeting notes of the meeting of July 14, 2021. We received no suggestions for corrections or modifications, so I'd entertain a motion to approve those meeting notes. Senate. Thank you, Ann. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Thank you, Andy. Any debate or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Any abstentions? That's uh, unanimous. So let's move to the uh, committee report, council project status and update portion of our agenda. I'd note that when we entered into a contract for help in publicizing our reports and to provide media training and assistance for our coordinator, we included preparation of two videos about Gray Salt Lake that Laura could use in her presentations, uh, a, a five or six minute video and a one minute video. And Laura is going to share those with us this morning. Right, Laura? Yes. <laughs> Before I start, I just wanted to say that um, so this is the first draft of this video. We, we no longer have a contract with R&R. &R. Um, we can update things as needed, I believe, in the future if we have uh, more work with them. And so um, no need to raise your hand and, and point out any inconsistencies. I do know that the bird number is incorrect in this, and we will work on getting that fixed. But our hope is we'll have this. Um, video posted on the council website, on uh, Forestry, Fire, and State Lands state website, and you guys are all welcome to share it far and wide with whoever you choose, and if you have opportunities to um, to use it at events or whatever, just uh, use away and let me know your thoughts on it. There's a, a five minute one and a 30 second one, and we'll be looking at both of those today. At 1,700 square miles, the Great Salt Lake is larger than Rhode Island and Delaware. The lake is truly a marvel. It contains 4.3 billion tons of salt. That's enough to de-ice every road in America for the next 174 years. Huge in size, its impact on our lives is even more enormous from the water we drink, to the snow we enjoy, and even the can of soda in your hand, its impact on Utah is hard to measure. But if you tried, it would be in the millions for wildlife and billions in economic impact. Each year, the Great Salt Lake contributes more than $1.3 billion to our economy. Rich in minerals, the lake is home to thriving industries. As the only producer of magnesium metal in the Western Hemisphere, the Great Salt Lake plays a key role in manufacturing, which is why it's found in everything from cans of soda to auto parts. Underneath the colorful surface of the lake, brine shrimp flourish. They're small, but they're a big part of the lake's economy, driving a multi-million dollar harvesting industry. The lake helps us in other ways too. It prevents dust storms. Lake effect snow extends our ski season by five to seven weeks, fueling our ski industry and our water supply. It's what gives us the greatest snow on earth. 
That alone protects over 20,000 jobs and over $1.2 billion annually in ski resort-related revenue. Although it's been called America's Dead Sea, the Great Salt Lake helps life flourish with a vibrant ecosystem. It's home for millions of birds and acts as an essential stopover for millions more of migratory birds. 80% of Utah's wetlands are found around the lake, which are a haven for up to 257 species of birds, including the bald eagle, and one-third of the world's Wilson's phalaropes. Since its beginnings millions of years ago, the Great Salt Lake has long been a symbol for indigenous populations and Western explorers. It's always been here, and with proper care, it always will be, but it's never been under greater threat. In recent times, the Great Salt Lake has lost half its water. Utah is one of the driest states, which means we use a lot of water. In fact, due to our heavy consumption, the water level of the Great Salt Lake is down 11 feet. If the levels continue to drop, the results would be devastating. Over a 20-year period, its overall economic impact could cost somewhere between $25 billion to $32 billion. The benefits of the lake often go unnoticed, but if it were gone, it'd be impossible to miss the consequences. For generations, it's protected us, and now it's our turn to protect the lake. We need water conservation now. To start, visit the Great Salt Lake website for more information. Work with your local government leaders to encourage new ideas and policies that will help us with water conservation. When we take care of the lake, we help our economy, our wildlife, and our future. And it's vital for the Great Salt Lake to be a part of that future. To learn more, visit gslcouncil.utah.gov. Does anybody want to give initial reactions? Or wait till the 30 second video. Dan? You? I'm good. <laughs> Looks great. It's great. Cool. I don't know if it's the, always when I see the mom, it's the mom and me, but when I see the mom and the baby ducks, I get all choked up. So. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure where this 30 second video will. The Great Salt Lake is truly a marvel. It's a haven for millions of wildlife and contributes billions to our economy. But today, the water level is down 11 feet due to our heavy use. For generations, it's protected us, and now it's our turn to protect the lake. When we take care of the lake, we help our future, and it's vital for the Great Salt Lake to be a part of that future. Any thoughts? Or Don, did you want to open it up to discussion right now or just kind of breeze through? Well, there's not really an opportunity to alter them. I would be interested in, <laughs> in feedback, initial comments, thoughts about usefulness of this of that project. Anyone want to? All right, Chris. It's really good. I think you get someone, you know, really, you can tell it's kind of designed to hit on key messages that, you know, as far as protect the lake, protect our future, you know, and, and so I think it's pretty effective as far as communication. So. Appreciate that. Other comments? Yes. I couldn't quite hear what she said, but what I think she would, was, might have said is uh, I, I kind of wish it had a stronger message for preserving the lake and ways to go about doing it. Mean, just, just something a bit stronger. I mean, it was a great video, but I, I think there's an opportunity to educate people a little more about what opportunities there are to try to keep water in the lake. Okay. Yeah, that was really good, but it's kind of left out recreation as a value. Okay. Other thoughts? 
you probably didn't notice, but that background music was a trance music, and you were all hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> when you get up and leave this meeting today, the first thought in your mind is, what can I do for the Great Salt Lake? It had that signal, you know, we need conservation now. That was like probably the most emphatic statement, but, you know, maybe, yeah. I mean, you know, you can always make things stronger, but I, I thought, you know, it, it didn't mention recreation. You know, it kind of pinged things pretty good. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I appreciated that the ask of the viewer was to reach out to their local uh, representation in the state, because that seems kind of unique from a government produced video to ask them to reach out to their, you know, their representation. So. Yeah. Thank you for noting that. Any other comments? Laura, thank you. I, Appreciate your good work on that. It's very usable, especially the longer one and as an yeah, introduction to presentations. Yeah, and thanks to you and Leland, uh, Jim, for working through it, getting it done. Thank you, Laura. Okay, let's uh, keep moving on. One thing I failed to do at the beginning of the meeting, because we got a late start, we didn't go around the room and have introductions. So uh, let's uh, do that. Laura, can we start with you? Hi, my name is Laura Vernon, and I'm with Forestry, Fire, and State Lands. I'm the Great Salt Lake Coordinator. Jim? I'm uh, Jim Harris with the Division of Water Quality and the uh, Water Quality Coordinator. For the Randy Elliott, Davis County Commissioner. Joe Havasey, representing extractive industry. Anne Neville with the Nature Conservancy. Don Leonard, representing aquaculture. Dan Tuttle, Tulum County. Ellen <coughs> Meyer, Stewart. Can I just make a note before we go on? Um, Paul is having a hard time hearing, so Don, make sure you speak into your mic. If, if you're not speaking into the mic, then people can't hear you. Uh, Paul, do you have one that you want to send around? If people want to introduce it. I'll do my, if we could send one of those that are sitting on the table around. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll grab it, hold on. Jack, Jack Ray with the Utah Waterfowl Association. Uh, Wayne works by Utah State University and Great Salt Lake Tech Team. Chris Klein, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Sorry, thank you, Chris. Uh, Laura Hansen, I'm with the uh, the State Planning Coordinator in the Governor's Office of Planning. Jan Streifel, League of Women Voters. Marissa Weinberg, Forestry, Fire, and State Lands. Jamie Barnes, Director, Forestry, Fire, and State Lands. Leah Richardson, Division of Water Rights. I'm Jared Manning with Water Rights. Ryan Rowland with U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, Ryan Doherty with Cargill Salt. Tim Hawks with the Great Salt Lake Brine Shrimp Cooperative, and I've been known to dabble in politics. <laughs> Krishna Khatri with the Division of Water Resources. Todd Stonely, Assistant Director of Utah Division of Water Resources. Craig Miller, Water Resources. Jeff Denblaker, Jacobs Engineering. Candace Hassenager, Director of Water Resources. Lisa Welsh, Utah State University. Joanna Interwada, Utah State University. Kate Rubelman with Rio Tinto. Max Malmquist, National Audubon. Janice Gardner with Sageland Collaborative, which until last week was known as Wild Utah Project. Trevor Nelson uh, with uh, General Manager of the Bear River Canal Company and member of the Utah Water Task Force. Thane Clark, Bowen Collins and Associates. Billy Fenimore, the director here at the Eccles Wildlife Education Center. And I want it to be a fly on the wall. Thanks for having us. I was hoping for that too. Ashley Kajowski, Division of Wildlife. Rob Hartman, U.S. Magnesium. Lindsay Hutchison, Utah Rivers Council.
I just have to remember to push the button. Uh, let's move to the next agenda item, which is uh, the Great Salt Lake Advisory Council list of supported projects. A couple of meetings ago, one of our council members suggested that we prepare a list of the projects that we participated in, sponsored, hosted, or uh, materially supported and or funded and Laura accepted that assignment that list has been completed it's on our website and Laura also sent it out are there any copies over here Laura we didn't bring any copies today Great Salt Lake Advisory Council supported projects as it turns out there are 25 that uh, made the list the last four or five of them are in process haven't been completed but they range from our first two reports in 2012 on the economic significance of the Great Salt Lake to the state of Utah, which is the foundation for that $1.32 billion number that we keep uh, hearing. And then a health assessment of the Great Salt Lake, which triggered another report uh, because the health assessment suggested that there were uh, some significant areas where we were lacking data. And so our third report was to prepare a list of re research was needed and prioritize that list in an attempt to try to get the the research dollars chasing the right projects. Uh, we had a couple of studies that focused on impacts of drying lakes, a study entitled Consequences of Drying Lake Systems Around the World, and then the other one that assessed the potential cost of a declining Great Salt Lake. We did a uh, water strategy report that identified 72 strategies to address lake level, and we followed that up with a legal and feasibility analysis of uh, 12 of the priority strategy of the highest priority strategies. We f provided funding for a facilitator for the HCR 10 group, which came up with their own list of recommendations, uh, some of which are moving forward. The conservation impact study and the expansion of that study have been received uh, well. Our GSL public relations, uh, quantifying nutrient loading and cycling, water reuse, and as I mentioned, the studies are still underway. And, and the list has been posted on our website, and I'd encourage you to uh, take a look and, and uh, review those items. Any questions about that report? Okay, the next item on the agenda is an update on the uh, ongoing projects. Uh, our integrating water and land use planning first phase was completed, and we received that report at the last meeting. Uh, that uh, phase two, uh, the RFP for phase two is out, so it's in the contracting process. GSL equation of state, we're hoping to receive that report at our next meeting, our November meeting. Great Salt Lake lake effect study is in the middle of the contracting process and should be issued, the contract should be issued by, uh, before our next meeting. Great Salt Lake watershed dashboard and mapper, this one has been contracted and the project kickoff meeting has been held with USGS and we expect a March 2022 completion date for that study. Discharge monitoring at the new breach, contracting has just been completed for that, and that study will, will soon be underway. Predicting flow and transport through the breach. So at our last meeting, our council approved three projects for funding, and then there was a fourth project that we approved as a contingency if, if funding were to become available. Uh, in, in some way, and I'm pleased to report that efficiencies in the other studies have left sufficient funding to do a light version of this uh, transport uh, flow modeling study, and, and uh, that uh, we're just getting underway with that process. So we have some good projects in the uh, pipeline, and we were uh, approached about an additional project I wanted to comment on right now. Uh, entitled Public Views on Water Strategies for Protecting the Great Salt Lake and its Wetlands. The University of Utah has secured funding from the Mariner Eccles Foundation, the USU Extension Water Initiative, and Utah State University Water Lab for a, a study about public views on strategies to address the lake. The purpose is to survey public opinions about various strategies for providing water for the Great Salt Lake ecosystem, analyze responses to determine what members of the public are willing to do, and use the results to inform ongoing water strategy. Importantly, they did not ask us for any funding. They've lined up funding on their own. What they are asking is that the advisory council serve as an advisor in that project. So for example, we could have them at our November meeting where they could show us their survey design, get some input from us about the questions, the nature of the questions, how, how this should be done. 
Uh, and then they'd come back a year from now in September of 22 to give us a preliminary report. Uh, and so my recommendation is that we agree to serve in that advisory role. Uh, we have two representatives of uh, that project uh, here today, Joanna Anderwada and Lisa Welsh from uh, Utah State University. Wave, where are you? There you are in the back. And they're welcome to visit with you and answer any questions uh, uh, following the meeting today. So uh, is there any objection to our assuming that uh, an advisory role on that process and inviting him back for some feedback? I'll entertain a motion to allow us to do so. So moved. Thank you, Ann. Is there a second? second? Thank you. Any debate or discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any, aye. any opposed nay? Any abstentions? Okay, great. That's unanimous. Thank you. Don, just to clarify, in the very beginning you said University of Utah funded. It's strictly USC. Okay, I apologize. I meant Utah State University. No worries. I know there's, you know, competition between universities. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Wanna. It's my declining mental ability that did that. It wasn't a purposeful mistake. I wasn't intending to cause any harm. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> and what agenda item are we on? <laughs> okay. All right, we have two excellent uh, uh, presentations today. For, Interestingly, their names are quite common, even though they're not interlinked. We have the State Water Plan and the State Water Action Plan. The first presentation will be by Candace Hossenjager. I need to provide a brief uh, apology to her. When we sent out the agenda for this meeting, we had her listed as the Deputy Director of the Utah Division of Water Resources. And, uh, of course, at the time, we, we weren't aware of her appointment as Director. But we apologize for that and congratulate you, Candace, and invite you to talk to us about the State water plan. Let me get that on. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, and no apologies needed. This is, it happened very suddenly and rapidly and things change. So as is life. Um, so speaking of, wow, what a year, right? Uh, 2020 will likely be one that we won't forget anytime soon. Um, as you guys have all been acutely aware, uh, through a worldwide pandemic, wild, wild weather events, and record high temperatures, flooding, and drought, um, we've experienced some of the worst water supply conditions on record. And I know I gave you an update on the water uh, state water plan last year, and so this is kind of an update to where we're at today. Um, just real quick, you know, in July we had about 99%, 99.94% of the state in extreme and exceptional drought to the worst drought categories, and Great Salt Lake and Lake Powell both dropped below their previous record lows. Um, then we went from hot and dry to intense rainfall and flooding in late July and August. Um, and it's really important for me to preface kind of the overview of this plan and kind of where we're at um, because it's important that we recognize that this is a planning document that looks 50 years into, a future, into the future and is not a drought response plan. This has been years in the making um, and I'm really excited the, about the tremendous effort that my staff has put in to produce a solid draft. Um, so this is a plan that focuses on three areas, including reliable data, supply security, and a healthy environment. It also prioritizes actions that the Division Water Resources will undertake in the next five years. Um, and I, I just want to make sure to note that since last year, when I gave a lo the last update, we have um, went through a process with the executive director at the Department of Natural Resources, Brian Steed, to um, up, rewrite, <laughs> fix the tone. It didn't change the substance of the plan, but more of the, the, the way it was written. So we redrafted it, laid it out, um, and I was really hopeful that it was going to go out for public comment today, 
but it didn't, and that's okay. Um, we are anticipating that it will go out for public comment on September 29th. Uh, it is currently being sent up to the governor's office to get his review and um, hopefully the blessing on it so it can go out on the 29th. We will have a little over 45 days public comment period that will close um, like November 15th. And then we'll also have a virtual open house the third week of October. We're still finalizing that date, um, but that's kind of the timeline that we're lo looking for. Um, so with that said, one of the other, a couple other bits of feedback that we got over the last year, um, we, we were, how do you say this? We were, uh, we shared the document with many other sister agencies and they provided us feedback that we either incorporated. Um, and one of those was that we, they didn't feel that the name of state water plan was the right name for this plan because it wasn't holistic enough. It didn't cover all the different water divisions. And so we did change the name to a water resources plan. So it's definitely heavy as um, you will all soon know on this, the supply and demand side. It does talk about agriculture, m and um, It doesn't go into extreme detail on water quality issues. And so with that, um, we, uh, there is a collaborative effort that you get to hear a lot more about from Laura underway to produce a more holistic state water plan that is more of the actions. Um, what are we calling it now? The coordinated coordinated water action plan that Laura will t describe to you um, shortly. Uh, and then, you know, it's just really important to note that a safe and reliable water supply is critical to Utah's prosperity and quality of life. Um, and climate scientists have predicted climate change will bring drier conditions and more extreme weather events. Um, that being said, you know, it's hard to say one year whether this is climate change or not, but in general, I bet we can all say we've experienced those this year, so we, we have um, that to prepare for and to look forward to in the future. Um, but we are, I, my staff and I are super excited about the effort that has been put into this plan and look forward to having more um, conversations with you, getting your public comment through that period. Um, and yeah, we definitely wanna make it the best plan that we can. So. That is my update for you. And I kept it pretty brief so that you can, um, I'm sure you'll see lots more state water or water resources plan presentations in the near future. Happy to answer any questions. Dan? So how does it feel to be the new director? <laughs> you know, I, I really appreciate that question, Dan. You know, uh, exciting, overwhelming are, are all, the, all the feelings that I've experienced. Um, I, and I have to say, like, when I actually gave my verbal acceptance, I don't ever know if I put it in writing, so I don't know if it counts, but, you know. Um, but when I, when I put in my, my verbal acceptance, uh, I started feeling a little overwhelmed. And I was like, you know what? I have a great team. I don't have to do it alone. Water resources and the broader water community, um, we're all in this together and I'm happy to play a role in it. Okay. Well, one of the things I'd like to ask is, what plans have you made for the Bear River water taking? The Bear River Development Project? Yeah, you can call it that. I, I, I call it the taking. <laughs> Well, but after I, a while, there's not any water to take. You know, I, I think that is definitely something that we will have to keep studying and understand into the future. We currently still have um, legislative guidance uh, mandates to study and to develop the Bear River. Um, that being said, at, at this point, due to the amazing efforts that have been put forward by Residents, water conservancy districts, you know, the way we've grown has also helped to reduce the amount of water demand that we are experiencing. Um, and so a project that was originally estimated, so the Bear River Development Act was passed in 19, early 1990s, 1993 or something. Um, and, you know, 
it was anticipated that the Bear River Development Project would be needed by 2015. We're 2021, and that obviously didn't happen. So by reducing the amount of water that we use, um, it projects that, you know, makes the need for that much later, 2050. Uh, so we are still studying it. Uh, we don't have any active ongoing studies. We finished a, a big one a couple of years ago looking at the feasibility of it. Um, we're currently in the stage of where we're purchasing right-of-way through tight areas going north. Um, but that's, that's kind of where that's at, and we will see how we go with that in the future. So one more question, if I may. So in today's newspaper, the Desert or the Tribune, they say that they have six billion dollars lined up to fix Utah Lake. So the developers are going to come in, dredge, pile all this silt, and make a resort. Mm -hmm. so they're going to put between a quarter and a half million people on that resort. That's a a really big resort. So how do you plan for that and are you, going, are you supportive of that kind of a situation happening on Utah Lake? Because they'll have to stop the water from leaving to back up the water so they can have their boats in order. I, and I'm probably not the best one to speak to that. I haven't been involved in those projects yet as, as at this point. So I, I don't know if I have a opinion one way or the other that I can give. Well, also in the article it said that Benson, is, is the developer, has got $6.4 billion lined up and he's going to angle to try to get government money to help them. Hmm. So I think we do need to have the Utah Lake Authority people come up and tell us what they're trying to do with everybody's water. I think that would be a fair request. Okay. To, uh, add someone to come and talk to us about what the impacts to the Great Salt Lake might be from what they're doing. And I got to tell you, you're a lot better looking than that other guy was. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. Well, hopefully, yeah, never mind. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Okay, I better take the mic back. <laughs> yep. Before we get in trouble, then. Okay, any other questions for Candace? All right, great. Congratulations and enjoy that corner office. That's great. Thanks for being here, Candace. Okay, our next uh, agenda item, we're happy to have a representative of the Governor's Office of Planning and Budget. Laura Hansen is both the Managing Director of Planning Coordination and the State Planning Coordinator. And Laura, thank you for being here to talk to us about what is now being called the Coordinated Water Action Plan, I understand.
in there. Oh, thank you very much. And, um, and so w we started thinking, well, gosh, you know, there's been a lot of really tremendous planning work that has happened um, in this state around water. And we don't need to start from scratch. We don't need to redo anybody's work. Um, how can we build on all of that great work and really help prioritize um, what the state can do as state agencies moving forward? And I think one of the challenges with some past planning efforts um, on water in the state has been everybody's ideas get thrown in the pot. And it's like, oh, you want to do that? Okay, that's a great suggestion. How about this one? Oh, that's a great suggestion. Throw it in the pot. But sometimes they conflict with one another. And um, so one of the things that we're hoping with this process really is to uh, help identify what some of the priorities are for the state and make some of those tough choices in cases, you know, do we want to recycle all of our water, our, our reclaimed water um, from Leland's um, and his peers' uh, treatment facilities, or do we want to maintain lake levels in the Great Salt Lake? Those both sound like really important ideas, but sometimes they conflict with one another. And so those are type, some of the things we're working through. So, you know, I think the big, comp or big purpose behind all of this is we are growing really fast as a state, um, and water is an uncertain resource, and this year has really highlighted that. Um, so GOPB, um, Governor's Office of Planning and Budget, is facilitating this process. I want to make it really clear that we're not leading this. I am not a water expert. <laughs> I don't claim to be. I don't want to be. I just am here to help facilitate the process. It is really uh, a plan that's developed by the various different state agencies and the experts there. Um, and we really want to build on all the great work that's already happened, including um, the water plan that Candace is about to release, um, as well as the concurrent resolution on the Great Salt Lake and, and many other other documents that I'll review quickly. Um, it's not intended to replace that state water plan. <clears throat> It's been assigned by state statute um, to that department to do that. Um, I, I hear the names change just today a little bit, and so we can talk about you know what that might look like in the future, but we're really not trying to duplicate that effort or replace that effort. We're trying to accomplish something a little bit different. So in past, past planning studies, we this is actually an old slide, oh dear. Um, where we found, oh, here, I'm going to just skip that since you can't even read it. I'll come back to it in just a minute. Um, and my animation got off on this. But these are all of the various different planning documents and studies that we've looked at um, to compile a list of over 200 different recommendations that have been proposed for water, um, pro you know, securing water, Utah's water future. Um, there's a ton of stuff out there, and there's a lot more documents um, that are currently being produced. And as I mentioned, sometimes those, those recommendations come in conflict with one another, and so we're trying to work through some of that. Um, we have been looking at, at all of these different recommendations, and I, I put them into kind of big buckets, and <clears throat> just to trying to organize them a little bit. And so I counted 38 uh, recommendations that were related to investments in infrastructure or programs. 56 that were policy or regulatory changes, legislative changes, legal changes. Um, 23 that were outreach and education related. 36 that were management and coordination related. And 42 that were um, tied to additional resource, uh, research, more planning, more policy or um, data gathering or monitoring. Um, one challenge with some of these, and we had five at the bottom that were just so general that I couldn't really put into a bucket, like use existing water uh, more efficiently. That's a no-brainer, right? But where does that fit? Um, one of the challenges with, with some of the recommendations were they were general enough like the bottom where it was hard to really make it actionable. Well, what is the, what is the action we're going to take? Who's going to do it? With what resources? Where? When? Um, and so winnowing those down, we found a bunch that were reasonably specific that so you could actually form an action item around them. And I will say that the concurrent resolution for the Great Salt Lake generated a ton of very specific, actionable uh, recommendations. It was really uh, one of the very best sources of information that we, we found on this, and, and really clear direction on what, um, what water managers and water users and industry and all the various different folks that are related uh, to the lake can actually do to help um, protect the lake. Um, and then a lot of them can only be done or, you know, can only a few of them can actually be implemented with the executive branch authority. So the idea here is this is 
a plan for the state agencies themselves to say, what can we do? What are our priorities? And what are the things that we're going to work on um, in the coming years to, um, to advance our, our water future? So with all of those recommendations, and it's really 200, not 100, but um, our goal really is to compile those, prioritize them, uh, negotiate the trade-offs when they conflict with one another, um, and start really outlining some implementation steps and what are the needs and resources that the state agencies need to, to move these forward. And then kind of a sub-product of this is really building a culture of interagency collaboration and just really, you know, Governor Cox's administration, he's really focused on uh, admin coordination and streamlining and, and encouraging state agencies to work together. And so that's kind of a subproduct that we're hoping um, comes out of this as well. And then the desired outcome, again, there's only so much that the executive branch can do, but executive orders can come out of that, directives to state agencies on things that they could do. Uh, we can make recommendations for policy changes for folks uh, like uh, our legislators um, to implement. Um, New studies and in initiatives can be taken on. Uh, the governor's budget could propose funding for certain types of things. And then again, um, a strong foundation of collaboration for the future. So uh, we're thinking about, instead of having one big document, having a series of sort of quarterly releases, quarterly reports. They'd each be you know, relatively um, consumable in length. We don't want to produce a novel here. Um, and they'd each have you know, a, an introduction, a summary of key issues, past planning work, and then a list of priorities. These are the things that we are going to focus on. And we, can't, we were trying to focus it on you know, three-ish, five-ish. Um, we can't have another 50 to 100 recommendations because it's impossible to prioritize your efforts when you have that many. So we're taking all of that and saying, what are the things we're going to focus on the next year? And then you can move out into the future as you accomplish those to, to tackle the next ones. So in our first meeting, we had sort of a pirate ship theme here. So uh, apologies for the jokes. But uh, this is an example of um, kind of what an action plan might look like in the document. So we'd have a, you know, a priority or a, a topic. Uh, we want to rebuild the deck of our pirate ship. Our, our goal is to maintain a quality pirate ship. Um, We'd have action items, we'd identify a champion, who are the stakeholders that need to be involved, a start date, milestones, an end date, the resources that we need to implement it, and performance metrics. How do we know we're actually accomplishing what we want to accomplish? Um, so we're hoping out of all of those recommendations that we'll be able to say, okay, this is how we're gonna move forward on, on these key things. Um, roles and responsibilities for the various different folks. So GOPB, again, we're a convener, a facilitator, project manager. We're not leading this, um, just, just bringing folks together. Governor Cox is really the decision maker. Um, we have a policy committee that's made up of all of the division and department directors. Um, this is including water rights, water resources, uh, drinking water, water quality, and the Department of Agriculture. And then we're bringing in some other additional state partners as well, like Forestry, Fire, and State Lands, um, PLIPCO, which is the Public Lands Coordinating Office, Division of uh, Wildlife Resources, various different folks that need to be involved. Um, and then we have a technical committee, which is made up of the staff of, of those various different uh, divisions. So we talked a lot about how, because I know there's a lot of folks here that don't work for state agencies, and you're saying probably in your heads, how can I get engaged in this planning process? And so we, we looked at the public engagement spectrum um, from informing all the way to empowering of how best we could work with folks. And really, you know, we've had a lot of public engagement in all of the past planning studies that we're referring to, the ones that developed that 200-plus list of recommendations. And so at this point, we've received a lot of public comment, and we're working to just implement some of the things that have been recommended there. Um, so this is a spectrum um, by the International Association of Public Participation with um, empowering is basically, it's a democracy. You vote, and we'll implement whatever you decide. And inform is, we'll let you know um, kind of what we're doing. Um, for the most part, the agencies themselves will be collaborating really closely with one another. We're going to involve a bunch of other um, key department state agencies. 
Consulting, there are specific groups that I think we're going to want to consult with, and I think this advisory council is, is a key organization that we're probably going to want to bring in and get your take on um, some of the recommendations and things that come out of um, that. And then for the most part, you know, we've, as, as I mentioned, a lot of public involvement has been done to develop these baseline plans, and we're just implementing what people already told us. Um, so we're focusing more on kind of just the informing um, section here, but there will be times when we need to bring in an industry expert where um, you know, we're talking about wastewater treatment uh, reclamation, for example, and so we're gonna reach out to the POTWs for that. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of how we're approaching this. And then we have some working titles here, um, which are rather, so these would be those quarterly releases, um, an introduction, just kind of explaining things, um, investing in infrastructure, resilient planning, productive agriculture, vibrant communities, and healthy waters and watersheds. These are just working titles. We're gonna work into them. And the idea behind the X's here, and I confess that I just dropped X's in various different boxes. They're probably in the wrong place, so don't, <laughs> don't rely too heavily on that. I was just trying to illustrate the fact that this is sort of a matrix approach. If we write a chapter on conservation, and then six months later, we release a chapter on agriculture. We miss the opportunity for that cross-pollination between those two conversations. And so the idea behind these big buckets and this matrix approach is to allow us to um, tackle lots and talk about lots of different topics as they interrelate with one another. Um, some of the types of things that might fall into each of those categories, um, you know, prioritizing infrastructure needs, both potential um, funding sources, funding and pricing, taking care of aging infrastructure is a big issue. Um, in the resilient planning, drought, wildfire, earthquakes, floods, critical infrastructure protection. Um, this year has been a, or last year was a good reminder that things can surprise us like earthquakes. Um, Agriculture would include rangeland management, canal ir uh, lining, irrigation system efficiency, um, maybe processing and distribution centers. Um, this is just a big brainstorm of things that we, we could include, and you can read the rest of it. I won't go through it all. Um, <clears throat> and that is kind of what I have to share with you at the moment. We're just very at the beginning of this planning process. Um, we're just organizing um, division subcommittees to or, um, kind of start working through this. Again, the focus is really what can the executive branch do to help secure our water future, um, and we really want to build on all the great work that's that's been done, including the new state water plan or water resources plan um, that Candace's shop has produced. So. Any questions for me? Thank you, Laura. Any questions? Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep you all informed, as I promised. Uh, we're probably going to put together some sort of project website that just has a timeline on it, and so you can follow along and um, see where we are. Laura, thank you for being here and sharing that with us. We'll follow up with you. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. The next item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone who'd like to address the council and provide a public comment? We haven't stirred up enough controversy today, have we? <laughs> okay, great. Let's uh, move to the next item. Uh, we have no action items uh, for, for council direction or, or debate or discussion that I'm aware of other than future council meeting topics. We do have the equation of state report hopefully coming at our next meeting. Dan's asked that we invite someone from the Utah Lake Commission to talk about their, what they're doing and how that might impact uh, the Great Salt Lake. Are there other topics you'd like to have addressed at a meeting, future meeting? Okay. We uh, have traditionally met the uh, second Wednesday at 10 o'clock in January, March, May, July, September, November. And it's our recommendation we continue that meeting schedule. We put those dates on your agenda. We'd ask you to take a look at those and then we'll approve that uh, uh, calendar at our next meeting. I will note the May 11th uh, meeting has a question mark by it because the Great Salt Lake Issues Forum is scheduled for that same period of time, same day. And then talking with Laura, I think our recommendation would be that we encourage you to attend that uh, session. And if as we get close to May, and, and not schedule a May 11 meeting, if there's some compelling agenda items we need to cover, we can always uh, f find a date and do that.
but uh, our, our recommendation would be that we hold meetings in January, March, July, September, November, and then for March, encourage you to attend the GSL issues forum. Any comments or questions about the proposed schedule? Again, take a look at your calendars and we'll uh, act to approve a 2022 calendar at our next meeting. Our next meeting is Wednesday, November 10th at 10 o'clock a.m. And uh, we're presently uh, scheduled to meet again in this facility. Any comment or feedback about this facility? Is this good, bad, or in different place for you to meet? Good? Okay, great. And, and Commissioner Elliott, thank you for hosting us in your county. Thank you guys for coming to our county. <laughs> Appreciate it. Go Station Park, spend some money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fun bus to Station Park's in the lot, <laughs> so you can uh, just climb on and find your way. There is a fun bus, right? Yeah, not in, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's Randy Sequoia. <laughs> we did, well, I say that because we were like number one in the state for uh, restaurant tax. We just skyrocketed this last year, so, well, yep. And it is almost lunchtime. It is. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Randy. Any other uh, business or comments or suggestions or criticisms or thoughts or meanderings? Hey, Don, I just Laura. wanted to pass on, Tom, as Don said, couldn't make it to the meeting today, oh. but one of the things he, he called me when I was on the way here, and one of the things he um, wanted to bring up or questions he had was there's the upcoming Utah League of Cities and Towns meeting, and he was wondering if there was a way for the Great Salt Lake Advisory Council to be involved in that. Maybe, Leland, it's you presenting your um, reuse study or something. So I don't know if the council is interested in having a um, if participation in that. I can look into it and see, and maybe it's me presenting you know, the importance of the Great Salt Lake to Utah League of Cities and Towns or someone from the council being there to present. So I'm... If there's no objection, Laura, we'll authorize you to go ahead and contact them and see if we can find a place on their agenda. Okay. We'll do. Tom had a comment about a meeting that's already been held. Do you want to share that comment? Yes. Um, if you recall, the council funded um, the continuation of the conservation impact study to Sandy and Metro Waterpolitan districts, and they um, that study was just presented to the board um, a couple of weeks ago and they were really impressed and really moved by the um, the findings of the study saying you know needing to conserve additional water and they said based on that study they were looking into other means to conserve water so he was very appreciative of that study and said it was um, worth the wait and um, worth the money so who made that presentation was it Shane I'm not sure sh it may have been someone from um, Bowen and Collins maybe Keith or um, it was Keith. Okay. Keith. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? For the first time in a long time, we're going to get out ahead of schedule. So uh, with, uh, at this time, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. We adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? That's unanimous. Thank you again for being here.